Yo, what's up guys? Toxico here. Today I'm going to be giving a complete rogue guide for everyone in Classic. If you plan on playing rogue, then this is the video for you, so stay tuned. In this guide, I will cover everything you need to know about rogues in Phase 1, including races, talents, tips and tricks, and pre-best in slot and best in slot gear you can obtain. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into the first subject. What is the best race for a rogue class? If you plan on rolling Horde, then I would highly recommend either rolling Undead or Orc. They're both tied for first in my opinion, but first we'll start out with Undead. So there is a reason why 98% of Horde rogues are Undead. It's because of Will Forsaken, it's so freaking overpowered, and Cannibalize is just amazing to use after you kill someone in PvP. If you want to be a PvP legend, then the Undead class is for you. While not as many people play Orcs, they're just as good as Undead. They have a 25% chance to resist stuns, and their blood fury racial is amazing. The only downside to being an orc is they're kinda ugly, but if you can get over that fact, they're amazing in PvP and PvE. When you resist that stun in PvP, it's gonna completely change the fire on for you, and you're gonna be so happy you rode an orc. Now if you're thinking about rolling alliance, I would definitely recommend dwarf. Dwarves would be the best rogue race because their stone form is absolutely amazing. It will help you get out of blinds, it will take bleeds and devouring plague off you. All around, it's just the best rogue race if you're Alliance. Now if Dwarf isn't your thing, I would recommend Human, because Human has perception as their racial, which is amazing for finding stealthies, especially in arenas if we go to TBC. But Human Rogues also have increased sword skill, which is great for PvE. The only other race I would recommend for being a rogue as the Alliance would be a Gnome. Gnomes have an Escape Artist racial, which gets get you out of slows, which will really help in your matchups when you're getting kited, especially against frost mages or even maybe hunters. But I would definitely recommend either human or dwarf before a no. Alright, so now that we've gone over all the races, let's start to go over the talents. So this is going to be the combat leveling spec. Also, it could be a PvE sword spec if you make a few alterations. This is going to be the primary spec that you want to go when you first start out. And you can switch to sub once you get level 30, but I would recommend staying as a spec all the way to 60. Alright, so moving on to our next spec, this is the combat dagger spec. This is going to be the main dagger spec that you want to run if you want to do PvE with daggers. Next we have the cold blood prep dagger spec. This is a great spec for PvP, and you can use it in PvE if you're not part of a hardcore raiding guild. This is the exact same spec, just with a few alterations. It really depends on personal preference, what you like. But if you like exposed armor, I would go with the first spec. If you like ruthlessness, I would go with this spec. Alright, so the last dagger spec I'm going to talk about today is with Imp Sprint. This dagger spec is amazing versus mages. You do lose cold blood, however, but once you get enough crit, you won't really miss it too much. Alright, last but not least, we have the Hemo spec. This is a great spec even when you're undergeared because your vis rates will still hit really hard with cold blood, and it's also great in PvP once you get geared too. This is just an all around great PvP spec. I'd highly recommend it. The only downside to the Hemo spec is it's not great in PvE, especially with the debuff slots being limited, so you will have to switch combat if you want to raid in a hardcore guild, but you can get away with being a hemo rogue if you're in a casual guild. Alright, so next we're going to move on to the tips and tricks part of the guide. The first tip I'm going to give you guys is about cheap shotting when it comes to mages. As you see here, I'm going up to this mage right here and I cheap shot him. I know he's going to blink, so I use my gouge, and if you use it at the same time when they blink, they'll actually be stunned in the gouge after they blink. If you can pull this off, it's going to be a very easy win for you versus a mage. So my second tip for you is if you have the Night Slayer set, you'll have 110 energy, so you can ambush and then gouge right after and they won't be able to do anything. This way you can save your stuns for after you build common points with ambush and gouge. This can be a good strategy in certain situations, but I would mainly only do it against cloth and leather wares. Alright, so my third tip for you is about global cooldowns. You have to pay attention to what spells are on and off global cooldown. For example, Goblin Sapper Chargers are off global cooldown, so you can tie them in with an Ambush or a Cold Blood Eviscerate and have big burst. Or your Vanish is off global cooldown, so if you're using your spells and you need to Vanish right away for like a Death Coil or a Palm Pyroblast or anything like that, you can do it without any global cooldown. So my next tip for you is about the limited invulnerability potions. If you're fighting a class that uses one of these potions that makes them immune to physical attacks for 6 seconds, you can actually use your Blind on them because your Blind is considered a poison. So you actually will be able to use your blind even if they pop this potion. Alright, so another tip for you guys, if you don't want to break your sap, blind, gouge, engineering helm, magic dust, whatever, 
uh, when you're using one of your combo point abilities, then you want to attack at a 90, 90 degree angle. This is so your auto attacks won't break whatever CC you have on the target. And you also want to press escape and reselect your target so you stop your auto attacks automatically. Alright, so I know I've been going through these tips pretty quickly, but I have a few more for you guys. So even if you're Horde or Alliance, you want to go to Westfall as a rogue because you can get the magic dust from the level 18 to 19 elementals. And you want to kill the murlocs there so you can get the large rope net, which is a, a net just like the engineering trinket, but it doesn't require a trinket slot and is on a one minute cooldown. And you can have as many of these in your bag as you want. Alright, so two more items you want as a rogue. It's going to be the Skull of Impending Doom, a quest item that you get that helps you break out a CC. And the other amazing offhand is called the Furbog Medicine Pouch. When used, it gives you 100 health every 1 second for a total of 1000 healing, so it's definitely a good item to use, especially when your Skull of Impending Doom is on cooldown. Alright, so talking about amazing combos, I'm going to tell you guys about the Root Tubers and the Health Pots. You can use both of these items to get, regain health and they don't share cooldowns, so if you wanted to macro them in together or have separate keybinds, you could use these two items together and gain a lot more health when you pop them. Alright, so I have two more tips for you guys. Uh, for when you get level 40, if you still need money for your mount, you can always pickpocket Scarlet Monastery. It's a great way to get money as you're leveling up. And you can also pickpocket BRD once you're max level. Just make sure you have the Master of Deception talent so you don't get seen by the NPCs. But using pickpocketing, you'll definitely be able to make a lot of gold. And it'll be very easy for you to get your mount, even your epic mount, later at 60. Alright, so my final tip for you guys is about when you're in a raid group as a horde rogue, you don't want to equip your main hand poison because you're going to want to get the wind fury proc from the shaman, and most times you're going to be in a group that's shaman when you're raiding as a rogue. So I hope all those tips were helpful for you guys. If you think of anything else and you want to drop it down in the comments below, go for it. I'll, I'll uh, drop some tips down in the comments if I think of anything else in between now and classic. But now I'm going to go on to my last section, which is the pre best in slot and best in slot gear you can get during phase one. Alright, so my first item on the list is your pre best in slot helm. It's called the Mask of the Unforgiven. This item drops from the Unforgiven boss in Strathalm. Moving over to our best in slot list, we have the Bloodfang helm, and that's going to drop from Anixia. Alright, so moving on to our neck piece, for the pre best in slot, you're going to want to get Mark of Forgery. It's from a long quest chain that starts in Eastern Plaguelands, and the last quest is called In Dreams. And your best in slot for your neck piece is going to be called the Anixia Tooth Pendant. It drops from Nixia, obviously. Alright, so moving on to shoulders, we have your pre best in slot shoulders, which are going to be the True Strike shoulders. They're dropped by Pyroguard Ember Seer, which is the first boss in Upper Blackrock Spire. Alright, so your best in slot shoulder pieces are going to be the Night Slayer shoulder pads. They drop from Sulfuron and MC, and they're going to be your best in slot for Phase 1. Now, for your pre best in slot cloak, you're, you're going to want to get the Cape of the Black Baron. This is dropped from Baron Rivendare, and he's a boss in Strathalm. Now for your best in slot cloak, it's going to be the Cloak of the Shrouded Mist, and that drops off of Ragnaros. Alright, so moving on to our pre-best in slot chest piece, it's going to be the Cadaverous Armor. It's dropped by multiple bosses in Skolomance. Now of course your best in slot is going to be your Night Slayer chest piece, which dro drops from Golemag and MC. Alright, so now for your bracers, your pre-best in slot and your best in slot are both bind on equipped. Your pre-best in slot are going to be the Shadowcraft bracers, and your best in slot are going to be the Night Slayer. Up next we have your gloves, so your pre best in slot gloves are going to be the Devil Sword Gauntlets which you can make from crafting or buy off the auction house. And your best in slot gloves are going to be your Night Slayer gloves which drop off Gehenna's and Molten Core. Alright so moving on to belts, we have the Shadowcraft belt for your pre best in slot. It is a BOE so you're able to buy this off the auction house if you're not able to get it to drop. And your best in slot is your Night Slayer belt which drops from trash mobs and MC, but it's also a BOE, so you're able to buy this off the auction house if you aren't able to get this to drop also. Alright, so up next we have our pre best in slot legs. These are the Devil Sword leggings. These are bind on equipped, so you can either craft them or buy them off the auction house. And your best in slot legs are going to be your Bloodfang pants, and these drop from Ragnaros and MC. Alright, so next we have our Swift Walker boots, which are your pre best in slot boots. They're dropped by Princess Mora Bronzebeard one of the final bosses in BRD. Now for our best in slot boots, they're going to be the Night Slayer boots. They drop from Shazra and Molten Core. So moving on to rings, your pre best in slot rings are going to be the Blackstone ring, which drops from Princess and Mara, and your Painweaver band, which drops from General Drac, the final boss in Ubers. 
Alright, so moving on to our best in slot rings, we have the Band of Akira. This drops off Ragnaros, and then we have the Quick Strike Ring. This drops off Magmadar, Barangeddon, Golamag, and Gar. Alright, so for your trinkets, your pre best in slot and your best in slot are the exact same items. So the first trinket you want to get is called the Hand of Justice. This drops from the final boss of BRD, Emperor Dragon Thorson. And the second trinket that you want to get is called Black Hand's Breath. This is a quest item that you want to complete by killing the last boss in Ubers. Moving on to ranged weapons, we have the pre best in slot, which is the Black Crow. This is obtained from Shadow Hunter Vosh, the second boss in Black Rock Spire. Now for your best in slot range weapon, we have the Blaster Shot Launcher. This drops from Golamag and Molten Core. Alright, so finally we move on to our weapons. I'm going to start out with the daggers. Alright, so starting out with our pre best in slot, we have the Barman Shanker. This drops from a mini boss in BRD. His name is Plugger Spazring, and you can actually solo him as a 60 rogue if you go up to him in stealth. The second pre best in slot dagger is called the Heartseeker. It's a BOE blacksmithing weapon, so you can either get this from a blacksmith or you can get this from the auction house. Now for our best in slot list, we have Perdition's Blade. This drops off Ragnaros. Now your other best in slot dagger is going to be called Fell Striker. This drops from Rend in Upper Black Rock Spire. Together with Perdition's Blades, this is going to be a great combo, especially when you get that chance on hit the proc. Now moving on to our last piece, we have the pre best in slot and best in slot swords. For pre best in slot, you're going to want to get the Dalaran sword set from Rend in Upper Black Rock Spire. Now for your best in slot swords, you're going to want to get Vishkag, the Blood Letter, which drops from Onyxia, and Brutality Blade, which drops from Gar and MC. I hope this guy was helpful to you guys. This is going to be my last video before Classic drops, but once I get my Rogue and Mage 60, I'll be making a lot more videos in Classic. So I'll see you then.